I became a bear hunter 11 years ago when I tried bear meat at a friend's cabin. My boyfriend likes to tell the story that I was eating venison, tried bear, and threw the venison over my shoulder and said, let's go bear hunting. That's pretty close to accurate. My first year bear hunting, I successfully harvested a 500 pound black bear. And since then, I've been hooked. Every year I've hunted hasn't been successful and I've been in a drought for about seven years. I'm hoping this year changes that. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill, the eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when your longtime lover of northern Michigan Welcome to Discovering. It is Michigan's bear season and it is the second hunt period and I have a tag for the second hunt in September 12th. It's about a 70 degree day and we're up in the tree stand. Um, check the camera the last couple days and we have a few bears coming in. There's a sow and a couple of cubs. And we have a one black bear that looks like he's about 200 pounds. And we got one that's about half the size of that. So I'm hoping that the one that's about 200 pounds comes in. and Hopefully we have a successful night. My heart was pumping hard the first 30 minutes, ready for a big Bruin to step out of the shadows. It feels different to be in the hot seat and not the one behind the camera. My boyfriend Justin is running the camera and those are his boots behind me. This is my first time hunting out of a tree stand and I kind of like it. You have a 270 degree or so view of the forest around you. Instead of a box blind or a pop-up ground blind, where you only have a small window facing the bait pile. Up here in the tree, I can see a long ways out and feel like I can be ready for when a bear starts moving in. Being in the open air allows you to listen closely to nature. I could hear the birds and squirrels, then the forest went dead calm. I listened closely for every sound, even though I know bears move quietly, making almost no sound. I heard a crash to the west. Not sure what that was. Near the end of the evening, a big raccoon visited the bait station, and wolves started howling in the not so far distance, sending shivers up my spine. As I mentioned earlier, this is the second period of bear hunting. The UP has three hunt periods. The first hunt starts the Wednesday of the first full week of September. The second hunt starts the following Monday and the third hunt starts September 25th. The UP is broken up into six bear management units and each unit issues a different number of licenses during each hunt period. Hunters apply for a license and are selected for a tag using a preference point drawing system. Number of points required for first, second, and third hunt also vary by bear management unit. The statewide license quota for this year is 7,001. First night of hunting and fortunately I didn't see any bears. Only excitement really was a big fat raccoon who looked pretty big coming in from the woods, but other than that, some gray squirrels and some red squirrels and a wolf howling in the distance for the last half an hour of the evening, but Unfortunately, no bear, so try again tomorrow. Day two.
My heart was not beating as hard as the first day. I'd say I was a little discouraged because the trail camera showed that only the small bear had been to the bait station in the last 24 hours. But then again, my first bear ever we only had one daylight photo of, so I'm holding out hope. Trail cameras are nice in that they show you what bears are coming to your bait and help you determine size. Studying the photos, I can reference the size of the bear compared to the bait stump or compare size between different bears so I know when one steps out if it's the one I want to harvest or not. The largest bear coming to the bait we think is about 200 pounds. Bears are tough to judge size. They all look huge through a rifle scope. But studying photos of them, their height, width, how low their stomachs hang, size of the head and shoulders can help give you an idea. Bears also feed heavily in the fall and can gain as much as one to two pounds per day. Day three. Bears are most active at dawn and dusk. So we don't hunt until after work, which is nice that you don't have to sit there for hours and don't have to take time off work for hunting. Another bonus of living here in the UP. While I waited for dusk, I watched a porcupine climb down a tree. The first leaves of the season fall to the forest floor. Listen to the geese honk as they flew south. Smelled the perfume of the hemlock tree I sat in. And was entertained by the noisiest creature of the woods, a red squirrel who guarded his prize mushroom that was not in that tree the day before. The same raccoon showed up again as the sun lowered in the sky. I watched him turn his head and look behind him and run off like something scared him. I knew then that a black bear was lurking in the woods. 90 seconds later he appeared, moving slowly through the trees to the left of the bait. I could tell immediately this was the bear I was after. Instead of going right for dinner, the bear sniffed the rock and sat down behind a tree, and my pulse quickened. I was losing light by the second and he was busy scratching his armpits. He was waiting for the cover of dark to eat. I could feel the tree stand and hear it shaking under me. Finally, he got up and walked in front of the bait pile and I put the scope on him, waiting for a broadside shot. And with only minutes of light to spare, he gave it to me. I called my dad to come out and help us track it. It looked like a solid hit, but you start to doubt yourself as time goes by and I was getting nervous and anxious when there was only tiny spots of blood that ended. Even though I know a lot of times big bears don't bleed, there's nothing worse than not finding an animal you drew blood on. We had heard him crash around, bouncing off trees but had no idea which direction. So we called in reinforcements. My friend Jerry brought his hound Mugs, and Mugs found my bear in no time. The bear dropped about 50 yards behind the bait pile. Rigor mortis had already set in, so we knew he had died quickly. He was a bruiser too, and had scars all over his face from fighting. I was nervous.
The next morning, we hauled the bear to Leroy at Northwoods Meat Processing in Greenland. Northwoods is also a DNR registration station, so that's convenient. You have 72 hours after harvest to register the bear with the DNR. I was also interested to find out the weight of the bear because he seemed larger than we originally thought. What's the magic number? Um, 205. 205? Yeah. 225? 225? Do I get in on it? Yeah, get in on it. I'm gonna go uh, 2... 210. Justin was just ounces away in his guess. 224.2. I'm getting a full body mount done for our hunting camp, so Leroy skinned it with that in mind. Yep, with doing it like this, you can do anything with it. You can do a shoulder mount if you want. You can cut it off, like right here, all the way around, and you'll have your full shoulder mount then. Or it's gonna be opened up. When the paws are cut off, it can be opened up too, like for a rug mount too at the same time. So doing it like this, you don't wanna naturally split down the middle. You wanna keep it whole as much as possible. Split right down the arms first, the back of the arms, all the way from the back by the claws, and the claws will actually, the whole paw will stay right attached with the hide. Hardest part's the armpits. I take my time with them, make it easy for the taxidermist. Okay. Just, yeah, open it up just like a, just like a rug. Okay, so the same thing on the back legs now. Just like the fronts, you split right down the back because that now. Our shop opened a year ago from August 13th of 21 is when we opened here. We didn't do any bear last year. We weren't licensed by the state until the last day of beer, bear season actually. So she's pretty much opened up and then We'll pick it right up by the pelvis, just like we did when we weighed it, and get it up in the air. And then uh, I'll get around the back side of the legs then, so I don't have to run my knife right in the concrete on the floor. Because <laughs> you want to leave the paw attached, you can't just cut it right around. So that's the trick part to getting it pulled as far as possible back. There is a joint here. I thought bear would be a little more like a pig, but they actually, their joint structures are considerably different. They have no tendons here, like a pig does. Some guys just go back to here and just cut it off right there, let the taxidermist deal with it. Um, but if you go all the way out, that's as close as you can get to the end of the paw and the taxidermist will like that a little better than half the leg off with it, because otherwise they have to cape it out. Yeah, so like when the back end is done, it comes off. There's your bullet. It was stuck just underneath the hide. It mushroomed it right out when it hit it. The front is gonna be just the same as the back was, all the way down to the joint. The front is usually easier to cut than the back one is though. So the same thing down here, now that it's off the legs, we're gonna go right down, down to the head. That's pretty good there. They don't have a very long of a neck. Timber. <laughs> There's a decent amount of fat on it. No, I mean, not terrible, but packing it on for winter. Weighed without the hide on, no. Hideless, the bear weighs 166 pounds. So we have a bunch of pigs in here, naturally. I'm curious to know now how much of that is meat. So these are the other bear that we got. Um, we got a few in here. My bear was number 15 so far for the year.
The next morning, I went back to Leroy's shop to watch the next step in processing my bear. Yep, both um, shoulders and hindquarters there. The main reason I hunt bears is for food. I asked Leroy the best practices for keeping the meat from spoilage. Cool it down. Don't ride around all day long hitting the bars up with your buddies and showing your bear off, especially when it's 75 degrees outside because that bear starts smelling really gamey after a couple hours and it's going to be rotten really quick. Cool it down. It's the most important. Ice. I've seen some diehard guys have freezers in the back of their pickup actually and they throw the whole bear right in a freezer generator. It's cold already. Perfect. Get it gutted right away. You don't want to leave the guts in because these kind of temperatures, it'll blow it up really fast too. I asked Leroy what types of cuts come off a bear and the smoked meats he offers to make. Pretty much just the tenderloin, back straps, burger, roast, steaks, and then if they want anything smoked out of it, keep enough trim for making snack sticks or summer sausage, or regular spicier summer sausage. Put cheese in it without cheese. Regular jalapeno snack sticks. We do a regular breakfast sausage too on there. Burger, just kind of general. We try to make notes on here too if somebody has special, like leg bones, dogs, um, somebody wants a fat cooking. Um, this one needs to be done by Saturday morning, heading back out of town. So we try to, and then somebody wants their back straps left whole. So we try to leave them have little notes and stuff for each one so we can kind of save them. Um, try to cut for, get the customer back exactly what they want. So what made Leroy decide to open up a processing facility in Greenland? Because there's like nobody within 200 miles that really processes. A few small shops process wild game in the fall, but that's about it. I have cows of my own and I was hauling them down to Anago to get slaughtered, processed. They also have a cooler in the shop where you can stop in and purchase their own meats. Leroy says he's been busy since opening and butchers all types of animals. Uh, cows, pigs, lambs, goats, yak, buffalo, deer, bear. Pretty much everything. <laughs> Seventy pounds of burger came off that bear, and fifteen pounds of cuts. I originally wanted twenty pounds of snack sticks and the rest burger, but decided to double that order. Are you gonna eat fifty pounds of burger in a year? No. We can make more snack sticks. I don't have to put it all into burger. So now we need to save forty pounds. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty. I'm good. That's forty pounds exactly. And these are estimation of a pound. They're close, but not perfect. Exactly one pound. That's kind of by feel. So there's a little lever on the side right here of the stuffer. So it's pretty much just. All my cuts of meat came in vacuum sealed, professionally labeled packaging. That thing's a lifesaver there. Um, we run, usually run four mil bags, which are a little heavier. Some stuff we have three mil in if it's boneless, um, but most of our bags are four mil to heavy plastic. So they, you throw them in the freezer, they're gonna be good for a long time. There's no bone in them, so they're not gonna poke the package or anything like that on, on it. So, uh, but no, that works really well. That's a pretty uh, important piece of the puzzle there. 1.8 pound. Our address and everything's on there. The date it was processed on is on there. Those are the inner tenderloins. Um, chops, that's the back strap. Had them all chopped up as you noticed on the tray. That's all back strap, back strap, back strap. It's all chops. And my snack sticks I picked up later in the week. And they are excellent.
And a quick calendar announcement to let you know the Calumet Keweenaw Sportsman's Club Gun and Knife Show is this Friday from 4 to 9 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at the Siskiwit in Calumet. That's all for tonight, and I hope to see you right back here next week for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.